What's going on everybody? It's Amy Beats here and in today's video I'll be going over five tips and tricks for players that have never played CSGO or Overwatch prior to playing Valorant. Alright, and there's definitely an elephant in the room and I do want to say that I'm not a professional. I'm not a CSGO professional nor am I an Overwatch professional, but these are good tips and tricks that I've seen top tier pros doing in their games so I thought it'd be useful to share. So Valorant's mainly a keyboard and mouse game if you haven't already seen on Twitch or YouTube or wherever you watch. With that being said, if you find this video useful in any way, then I'd really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribe for more content. So for the first tip and trick that I have for you guys today, it's going to be movement. And movement includes things like peeking correctly, AD ADing to like counter strafes so that you get a more accurate shot and things of that nature. And hold up, if this is your first time playing Valorant and you never played CSGO, I just want to let you know that you do run faster with your knife out. And there's also a thing where it's called bunny hopping and you can continuously just keep pressing the space bar and get in this little groove and rhythm of bunny hopping. So as you can see in the video, I keep going left, right, left, right, and this is called strafing. Strafing allows you to shoot on the move and it makes you less likely to be hit by the enemy. And bullet spray is something I'll go over a little bit later, but to give you an example, in order to do a right micro counter strafe, you would want to click DDA and the left mouse button all at the same time. What this does for your character is it makes it mobile and harder to hit for your enemy while also making your shot the most accurate it can be while strafing. Alright, so now let's move on to peaking. And peaking is divided into three to four categories depending on who you talk to, but I'm going to leave it with three. And the three that I'm going to use is shoulder peaking, jiggle peaking, and wide peaking. So shoulder peaking, you just want to get a quick glimpse of your enemy and don't want to get shot in this scenario you just want to gather some information that you can share with your teammates so that they can get a better position with jiggle peeking you're doing the ad ad movement where you just want to clear default map spots because what this does it helps you generate map control and ultimately gives you that one up on your enemy and lastly wide peeking wide peeking is only beneficial if you know that it's going to be a one versus one and not a one versus two and i wouldn't advise doing it if you don't know exactly where the enemy is so as you see how i'm practicing it here you can simply do by yourself and you can do that by selecting practice mode hitting open range and when you're actually in the range choosing the character sage you can use Sage's special ability to put up the wall and create these in-game scenarios that you normally would see. They may not be perfect, but you can certainly practice those peaks that we just discussed. Alright, so if you're already in the shooting range, stay in the shooting range. For my second tip in this video, I'm going to be talking about spray patterns. The unique thing about games like Valorant and CSGO are that every weapon has their own unique spray pattern and coming from a game like Fortnite where I was used to bloom rather than having to actually learn a weapon spray I wasn't really quite sure of how it all worked out so the only logical thing to do was queue up a match and shoot against the wall and just to give you a little textbook terminology Spray pattern refers to the bullets direction when a player continuously shoots from a firearm Recoil is how your crosshair moves around while shooting and recoil compensation refers to how to properly manage the crosshair so that the bullets hit the target as accurately as possible. And as you can see in the video, the farther you are, the farther your bullet spread will be. As well as if you move a lot, you will also experience a lot of bullet spread. That's why it's good to practice the counter strafing method because that's what's going to help you get the most accurate shots while remaining mobile. And because every gun has their own unique gun spray is that they have to compensate for this recoil by pulling down and kind of to the right but that's where it differs with every weapon and that's why it's important that you go in the shooting range and use all the weapons that you normally would use in a game. 
Also tip if you're using a sniper such as the marshal or the operator, it's important that you stay completely still when shooting to get the most accurate shot possible. Now I personally don't use firing air or movement air, but those are some things that you can add into your crosshair to help you know when to shoot and when not to shoot. Anyways, I'm going to move on to my third tip and that is learning the abilities. While the abilities weren't really prevalent in CSGO and more so Overwatch, I think the abilities make up a huge part of the game. If your opponent has Phoenix and uses their ultimate and you hear Joke's over! You're dead! And then see a Phoenix walk around the corner, you can kill that Phoenix and then walk around that same corner and because of that respawn delay, you'll be able to get there faster than your enemy respawns. The cool thing in Valorant is you know when your enemy, and or your opponents rather, have their ultimates. And then another tip for you that honestly I find myself guilty of is if the enemy team has a raise and she has her ultimate, do not run in a crowd of five. Another example for you would be if your map gets all fuzzy, you can be sure that there's an omen nearby or maybe nearby and be sure to check those corners because that's an easy free kill for you as well. And just as important it is to learn the enemies abilities and ultimates, it's also important to know when to use your own ultimates. If you have jet, don't use her throwing knives if there's only one enemy left and you have all five alive on your team. Now this stems into my next tip and that is learn the buy system. So unless you played CSGO in the past, I'm sure many of you may have not experienced a buy system before. Everyone's weapons reset at the start. So there are only two times in the game where everyone starts from pistols and that is round one and round 12. Those are the two rounds that you want to be weary of because those early rounds are when you want to preserve as much as possible so that you can have a gun in that mid game end game fight. For an example, most pro players tend to buy ghost pistols or even stick with the standard pistol in those early rounds. And that's going to be round 1 and 2 and obviously 12 and 13. And you can actually track this for yourself. If you're at the play tab, you can go ahead and hit career. You can find the game and you can hit scoreboard. And this is how you can track your own econ rating. Obviously everything in the green is good, but I would recommend getting a good econ rating of upwards of 75 to 80 and keep that consistent. Track this over games and, and just see how it works out for you. And with that being said, my last and final tip is comms. The comms gotta work. Whether that's learning the different map locations or also just alerting your teammates when you're going to buy specific weapons and abilities, I think that those are all key components to the game that you need to let your teammates know of. This stems off of everything that I've talked about in this whole video because communication is what's going to drive wins. And to give you an example how communication ties in with everything, I mean even with the buy system for example, let's say you guys are popping off and it's 2-0 and you want to do a full buy, well you want to obviously alert your teammates of that as well so that they're prepared and have weapons themselves. And a full buy is a lot quicker to say than AR. I'm going to get my abilities, I'm going to get full shield. Comms are just easy, direct to the point, and that's why it's important that you queue up a custom match and also just learn the different map locations. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys today in my 5 tips and tricks for new Valorant players. Today we talked about movement, gun spray, abilities, the buy system, and communication. All I ask is that if you enjoyed the video and you found it useful, to please smash that like button and subscribe. Because who knows, maybe you'll like my next video as well. Peace.